We're live. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Mastering Music with Matthew. And today we're going to be talking about copyright. Bogus copyright claims on my video. Oh, no. And I have with me two very awesome special guests. Today, I have good old faithful Jennifer Valaket. Jennifer is an awesome musician. She plays saxophone and flute. You can check her out collaborating Thank with you. Elite Bata playing the Godfather theme. I think that's probably your best YouTube video so far, in my opinion. Good job, Thank Jennifer. Thank you so much. Thank you. And you're going to be here to help to offer some of your uh, opinions from a classical music point of view. And we have today the star of the show, the lady who's going to tell us her story, and we're going to decide whether it's fact or fiction. Nathara! Hello, how you doing? Did you just come down me? No, no the copyright. The, the copyright. to you. <laughs> she, you're, she's down here. <laughs> I, was, I was wondering that too. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> I do that all the time. I, I'm sorry. He, point, he points right, I won't to do the, my he, thumb. I'll point with my finger. Yeah, point with your finger. That point, was better. I'll, I'll do the Disney point. The Disney I was point. wondering she's that too. down here. <laughs> I was like, are you thumb down thumb downing the copyrights or <laughs> Okay, so so why don't we go ahead and give Nathara a chance to tell us her bogus copyright claim story and then we'll react to it and give our thoughts. Excellent. Well, this has happened multiple times in the past and now it just happened again like a week and a half ago. But so I'm a belly dancer and so I, you know, dance to music, obviously. And it keeps happening where some distributor bot will claim one of the songs that I'm dancing to as a copyright claim, which is fine. You know, copyrighted music is important too, but it will be the wrong song and the wrong artist and the wrong distributor. And that's what ticks me off. Like if you're the actual artist claiming copyright on my channel, like that's fine. Get your goods, like get your props, get your money. But if it's not your song, you should not be doing that. That's theft on multiple levels. And the crazy thing to me is that these videos are unlisted. Like they're my private videos that I only put out when I'm like booking gigs again or teaching classes or whatever. So for now, like at the moment they claim this most recent one, they're hidden from public. They're not private, they're just unlisted so I can still send them out privately if I want. But like they're two and a half year old videos that are unlisted on an unmonetized channel and they're doing bogus copyright claims. It's just the escalation of offense to me <laughs> and like i said mm -hmm. i have no problem with the legit artists grabbing their copyright and getting themselves out there on all my videos i always put in who the artist is and the song i'm dancing to so it's not like it's gonna bother me for them to be like yes that's me <laughs> but if somebody else claims somebody else's song then i get mad <laughs> the last time i had to do this because youtube obviously does not involve themselves in the process at all so when you have a bogus copyright claim and you dispute it, your options are really limited. It's basically like, I paid for a license and it's my music. Um, you can't say like, you're wrong. <laughs> you're, you're wrong and lying. And if you do dispute it for some other reason, um, that dispute goes back to the person making the claim. Like YouTube will send you a notice saying, we're not going to look at it. This is between you and them. So the person who's stealing somebody else's music on my video is the person that I have to go to to ask them to please not do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. <laughs> and if they disagree with me, if they're like, no, we're really going to claim it, then I get a copyright strike. Mm -hmm. And you all know on YouTube, three strikes and you're out. Your channel is deleted and you're gone. So in the past, this usually happens where I send the dispute. I'll usually get them disagreeing with me within seconds, mm -hmm. minutes at most. So it's not even like a person looked at it. It's just a bot responding to it. And uh, and then I, in order to avoid the strike, I end up deleting the video. It makes no sense for a dancer to have muted music or to replace their music. So, go no. on. No, it, it really doesn't. I, I can totally agree with everything you're saying there. There is a way to get a human on the other end. Um, I just watched your video with Marina. Yeah. 
like a couple days ago. Mm-hmm. And I rewatched it last night, so I've queued up her video on how to contact a human. Good. That's what I was going to recommend because I don't remember exactly what she said. <laughs> But, but I remember I interviewed her, and I remember yeah. she said it. <laughs> well, she basically said, like, she had to get viral on Reddit and Twitter before mm-hmm. somebody at YouTube reached out to her. Mm-hmm. So crazy. Yeah. There's yeah, a lot to unpack here. It's pretty messed up. And it's uh, it happens most often with, like, non-Western music for me. So if I'm using an uh, Arabic artist or an Indian artist or something like that, I'm more likely to have a, a bogus copyright claim. Wow. Yeah. And it, it's absurd because it's like, they're like, this is, you know, you get that notice at the bottom of your video that's like, this is this song by such and such artist. I'm like, no, mm-hmm. no, it's not. <laughs> you just, just bought, read my description. It's in there. It's in the title and it's in the description. <laughs> like, you can just copy my work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've definitely had that um, myself. Um, I remember the first time I ever did a live stream where I sang cover songs. Um, after the video, you know, I almost pooped my pants when my email lit up with like 20 emails from YouTube saying all the copyright claims. Now, I mean, I, I did, it wasn't the copyright claims. Oh, thank you for subscribing, Eric. Uh, it wasn't the copyright claims that were the issue it was just, just, just the sheer number of emails so i was like whoa and i was like opening up all these emails and it's you know all this standard form email stuff and you know um among all those copyright claims i i actually went through them and i was looking and um they were all right except for one there was one mm-hmm. that was like the song is and then it was just a bunch of pardon my ignorance i mean this But it was a bunch of Asian characters. I don't know if they were Chinese, Japanese, Korean. I don't know whether they were kanji or what. But they weren't, you know, letters. And so I was like, "Um, this obviously, unless that's some kind of Chinese translation of some song I sang in English, which I don't think it is, this can't possibly be correct because I didn't sing anything in Chinese, I don't need to speak Chinese, I don't know any, or whatever Asian character that was, I have no idea, it could have been, it could have been Mary Had a Little Lamb for all I know, because I have no idea what it said. Now, I didn't do anything about it, because I was like, okay, you know, this is my first live stream ever. It wasn't even that great. I just didn't even bother trying to dispute it or, or anything. I just let it go. Um, because it wasn't that important. But in that same live stream, I got the whole live stream blocked by one cover. It was Desperado by the Eagles. I, I sang that in the live stream. The whole live stream got blocked and I had to delete it. Also on my channel later... My cover of Desperado, which was an upload, later got pulled down when it was approaching a thousand views. Got and I got a copyright strike for it directly. I didn't even wow. dispute anything. They just pulled it down and gave me a copyright strike. And they were just like, "Damn you, sir! Uh-huh. <laughs> How dare you?" <laughs> uh huh. No, no. Okay. No. So, so this brings me to what I wanted to talk about. Um. I watched a video today, which is exceptionally good, uh, in preparation for this. And it actually mm-hmm. just came out, like, today or yesterday. It's brilliant. It just came out yesterday. It's on channel Democracy at Work. I highly recommend this channel. Now, it is political channel. It's, an, it's about economics. And so, you may not agree with everything this guy says, or, or you, you may be a part of his choir like I am. But the point is... Um, Looking at copyright from an economic standpoint, okay? It's one thing to say to somebody, hey, you did something really awesome. And so society wants to reward you. Maybe even give you money. Maybe give you a plaque. Maybe like, you know, talk about your achievements. Maybe put you on a special program, you know? Maybe maybe give you the chance to play in the Super Bowl, whatever. But... It's not like because you write a great song, society can't reward you. But Mm -hmm. why does it have to be property that could then be withheld from others if your demands are not met? And when you take this and you expand this out 
to the principles of patents. Uh, you really think about it, and it's like, especially in medicine, it's just stark. It's like, okay, you discovered this, say, vaccine, because that's the hot topic. That's great. Should you get paid for it? Should you make money? Yeah. Should you get to be on the cover of the medical journals and, you know, get on to be on, on The Tonight Show and whatever? Sure. But should you get to patent it so that you can say, no. Your country's too poor. You should never be able to make this vaccine unless you pay my price. I mean, this is authoritarianism, right? Mm -hmm. This is this is like this is totalitarianism through economics. It really is. It's like this is my property and you can't use it. You can't even sing my song on YouTube. I'm going to punish you. Well, the fun part is when you extrapolate those copyrights and patents through like other sectors as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a huge issue like in the technology sector mm -hmm. and because those patents are just very vague. Mm -hmm. So you can't do something like a four chamber electric battery for a car because someone patented it. Like you're not even using their design. You're using like a completely different method of electricity harnessing in order to create your battery. It's just like, technically still a battery but someone patented it before like we realized there were varieties and things and so like oh well you just can't do it mm -hmm. and yeah. so like in the early days apple and of course ibm like worked the crap out of those patents mm -hmm. you know and so like now we're seeing like tesla do the same thing and it's just like okay i guess we're just gonna block off the entire sector of like motorized uh scooters or something because someone has a vague patent Mm -hmm. yeah. And the point that you said about the accuser being the initial arbitrator is the most offensive part because mm -hmm. you can get a person from YouTube to talk to. It, you can get around them. It's not easy. But, I mean, it just doesn't make any logical sense to me at all. It's like, you know, how could your accuser be the one trying you? Like... Exactly. They, they have a conflict of interest. It's that simple. And they have no incentive to be honest. Exactly. Right. There's no reason except for like personal integrity and like we know production companies aren't like that. Mm -hmm. and you know, so I'm like, you're wrong about this claim. And they're like, nah. Well, one thing that's going to happen, and I'm not a prophet, I'm a YouTuber, is YouTube sent out an email a couple of months ago, not even. And it was June 1st, this policy changed. So that might be explaining the timing of this. Um, mm. YouTube now has the right to monetize everything. They, uh, You agreed to it by using YouTube in your terms of service now. They updated it. That says that you don't have to be monetized for them to put ads on your video. They can put ads on your unlisted video or your private video or whatever. They can put ads on whatever they want and... If you're not monetized and part of their ad program, well, then they're just going to deal with the money and, you, you know, you're just going to have ads on your video. So yep. that is increasing the copyright claims. That's increasing these bots. Um, and, you know, they have all the incentive in the world to make claims because then they're going to just start. It's like Superman 3. You ever see, ever see Superman 3? Oh, it's been a while. Yeah, I or, or 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 Office Space. It's the same <laughs> God, plot. Yeah. Same yeah, plot. Yeah, yeah. Right there, the, the guy in Superman Three was like, "Hey, uh, all these checks, man. It always says that it pays you this much, and then ninety nine hundredths of a penny. What happens to that hundredth of a penny, man? Right? And then he like mm -hmm. made some kind of computer program that funneled all those hundredths of pennies into his account, and then he was instantly rich." <laughs> you know yeah, yeah exactly and it's it's so frustrating like i'm starting to get really bitter about the whole like content creator thing like um that's not what i do i don't create content for a platform i'm, I'm an artist doing art you know it's mm -hmm. right. not the same thing and the fact that like all these platforms like tiktok and instagram um and youtube have just decided to profit off everyone without sharing any of those profits as much as they can. Like I was so close to being monetized a couple years ago when they changed their requirements. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I was like, 
all right, so it'll be another couple of years before I can even like think about that again. I was like, I don't know, a couple of weeks away when they changed. Oh, the I can beat I you. Like, I can beat you at that. I was like, oh no. I actually was monetized. Oh, I actually was monetized? monetized, and then they changed it. And then they demonetized oh, me. Mm-hmm. That is so rude. I had made, it really is. I had made like 37 cents or something. That's, but that's, you know, just the beginning. It was just the beginning. The good yeah. news. Hey, thank you for subscribing. Hey, you, you were just talking about them. The IBM channel just subscribed. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> for a dollar, it's a bot. <laughs> hey, maybe they, maybe IBM wants to know what, what we're talking about. I don't know. But hey, I'll take the subscription. Bottom cool. Up. <laughs> How do you, you see that? I don't for when YouTube changes them again. Oh, I'm sorry. What, what was the question? I, I was saying we, we need those numbers for when YouTube changes the requirements again. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I am pretty much, you know, I mean, I'll take what I can get for the YouTube ads, but I'm I'm not really, you know, dude. I get about fifteen cents on the dollar for whatever YouTube takes in. That's not even a good gratuity, mm-hmm. and and it's because of copyright. Now, granted, the bulk of the videos that I upload are reaction videos, and so I expect a lot of money to go out in copyright. And a lot of the another bulk of the videos that I do are cover songs. And so I expect the bulk of that money to go out, you know. But then I do have times where, you know, I have blocks and the blocks are the worst. That's that goes back to what I was saying this at this uh, copyright video that, that Richard Wolf put out on Democracy at Work, right? It's like, you know, my ability to do one step more than take the money. My ability to say, no, 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 shut that down, you know, with or without a strike. The strike adds insult to injury, but, you know, it's like, and then there's there's automatic claims, and then there's manual claims, too. Mm-hmm. And if you get big enough, if you get big enough on YouTube, they start to watch your channel for manual claims. People will sit there and watch your video and, ooh, click the button. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's... Uh... Like, I'm pretty lucky that, you know, my videos don't do anything. Like, so they're unlisted, so nobody sees them unless I intentionally send them to them. But, uh... So you're using YouTube yeah, more I'm as really... a portfolio or, a, or, or a, a cloud to store your stuff. Yeah, like a, like a resume, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh... But, yeah, it's it's so frustrating. And the blocks... Like, I, it's fine if it's, like, blocked in one place. For me, like, you blocked it in, I don't know... Kazakhstan or something like that's that's fine that's one country I get copyright is weird country to country. like international copyright law is a mess and it's terrible and horrible and you have distributing like it's just a complicated horrible thing that we should probably figure out because it's like 2021 but um so like blocking in one country is fine but one of the claims I have like the little pop-up that tells you what countries you're blocked in mm-hmm. is larger than my monitor mm-hmm. and I have a 17 inch monitor <laughs> like I'm looking at, it, I'm like, I'm gonna have to make this plot unreadable to read all these countries. Yeah, I um all the time I have to cut cut things out of my live streams. One time I even had a live stream cut live for copyright. They just, what? They just cut, I w- yeah, I was streaming a reaction and they just cut it live. So I mean, you know, that can even happen. Um, it's, it's it is what it is. It's just mm-hmm. you know, it's there's there's just too much. There's just too much economic power consolidated, and you know the pandemic has just made it much worse. Yeah, um, yeah. I get, you know, if I get a video with ten thousand views, I seriously I get like a dollar fifty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have no idea how people are like making a sustainable living off that. Like that's insane numbers. Yeah, I don't think you can oh, really. You're supposed, to, you're supposed to get more like ten to fifteen dollars. You see, but then by the time everybody else takes their cut. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how much they love their content creators. Good yeah. job for them. <laughs> right? Yep, yeah. that's true. That's true. But you know, at this point I I'm I'm not doing it, you know, for money. I'm doing it, you know, for a platform, you know, for something to do and, you know, honestly, it's it's a way for me to, you know, teach and and help people. Uh, you know, remotely and get people aware of, of what I'm doing. So that's the biggest thing, 
you know. And YouTube used yep. to be just the coolest thing, man. It really used to. It, it did. Yeah. It's it's just um. It's just gotten too big, you know. As yeah. far as as far as money, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it used to be like a really weird place. Um, just like full of creativity, it was easy to find. Thank you for subscribing, artists. Hamsa. Sorry. It was easy to find other artists instead of just like commercial corporations riffing off other people's work. By riffing, I mean stealing. Which yeah. Is on the legal side of that. Um. And now it's just kind of like become a marketplace. The only way to like um, share your stuff or get eyeballs on it is to like spam your social medias and have all your friends share and blah, 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 or like collaborate as much as possible. So you can get like the big names coming and bringing their audiences. Like if you're a small time artist, it is hard to get eyeballs. Well, and like, yeah, I've had my channel going for 10 years now, like a whole 10 years. This is my 10th mm -hmm. anniversary. And That's awesome. I'm not monetized. Like I'm not. Clear. I'm clearly not doing it for money. <laughs> I'm doing it because I'm a sucker, maybe. But um, it's it's so frustrating. Like knowing that YouTube is making money off me for ten years, and like I, as much as I love Vimeo, um, if I send people a Vimeo link, they're like, mm, "Is that a porn site? Am I gonna get a virus?" Is that <laughs> and I'm like. <laughs> I, I sent it to you. There's a paragraph explaining to you what I'm sending to you right now. And I, and I say, here's a link on Vimeo. I'm not being a bot. I haven't been hacked. Like it's clearly me and I'm a bit of a tech nerd. So like, if I send you a link, you can pretty much trust it. Yeah. <laughs> but oh my gosh. Yeah. So using another platform is just not the thing. I don't know if you guys saw, but like, um, there's a bunch of black creators on TikTok that are like doing a mini strike right now. No. That, um, <laughs> white tiktokers will steal their choreographed dances to big songs and then like get all the money and credit and rep for it without because they don't credit the original choreographer and because the music industry re is relying on tiktok now to get their big summer hits out wow like, you're not going to be a top 10 you know pop hit anymore unless you have a tiktok thing going on that's crazy too. Do those creators get money? No. <laughs> they don't even get credit. So like the way corporations are really uh, taking advantage of creators and artists is some bullshit. As far as as far as the whole copyright claims thing goes, you know, it's it's probably just gonna keep getting worse because, you know, with YouTube allowing these uh, bots companies to be the judge, they're just gonna keep making claims and you know, like we did the, the video with Marina specifically, they keyed in somehow the the, the song uh, Moonlight Sonata, note for note exactly, and then retitled it as a copyrighted thing, Wicca Moonlight. That's how they do it. Because of Mickey Mouse, nothing that's copyrighted will ever be let loose, ever, because they will never let the Disney characters loose, because if they did, I could open my own Portland Disneyland, and they won't have that. You, you, you have to have the lock on all that forever. And so every time Walt Disney's death extends long enough, right? Oh, it's going to expire. They just lobby and then they get it extended. And so not only do we have a forever copyright that will never become public domain, but we also have um, this, this system is going back and trying to eat our classics that are public domain at the same time. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And uh, the claimants can lie about it, say stuff that is theirs that isn't, say stuff that's public domain that isn't, uh, say stuff that's royalty free. It isn't actually, it actually belongs to this person who had no involvement whatsoever. And YouTube's like, yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. I've just been noticing for me, like, I, I haven't had any issues with YouTube, but I haven't really done things that are really, I, I don't think that they would notice or whatever. But, um, but I have had issues with Instagram and even Twitter now. Twitter puts this thing where they actually block your account now if you put a TikTok up there or a music thing up there, and they will they will actually shut down your Twitter account until you read the copyright claim thing, and then once you hit okay, I read it, then it it's back up, and they're like, oh, but we deleted your video. I'm like, what? They never did that before, never. So I was even asking asking Nathera the other day. I was like, is my Twitter down? Like, <laughs> I was like, right, remember that? And I was just like, am I down? Like, could you see this message? Like, <laughs> it was weird. 
And so it, it's just, I, I think it's getting out of hand. And then when you try to reach somebody, you can't. Like, like Instagram and Apple the other day, too. Like, there's a problem where I can't post long videos on Instagram anymore, and it's an Apple thing. Apple says, well, contact the distributor because that's, that's the only way to do it. And I'm like, Apple, do you understand what I'm saying? They do not get back to you. And then Apple just ignores me. So it's like, great, <laughs> you know? It's like, but uh, I think it's a little out of hand where the fact that, that just when you post like a 15, even a 15 second video, like they're like, oh, you have to read the copyrights. Like, like, no, come on. Like 15 seconds, who's got to do anything for 15 seconds? You know, like it's crazy. Right. And like the way the copyright system works, if, uh, and the way they've worked it out for tech companies is that if you take content from TikTok and share it onto Twitter, ultimately, if anything illegal is done, that comes back on TikTok. So like Twitter's not even going to be affected if you're violating copyright on TikTok. Right. I would like to see the law be redone in a way where it's like a middle ground. Like mm -hmm. you can't do nothing, but you can't keep doing what you're doing either. Like I think I think that copyright needs to like be redetermined in a way that is sort of a compromised position, a middle path, a middle ground position between all and nothing. <laughs> because right now we're at all. Yeah. And we definitely don't want nothing. <laughs> and what that would look like might be a little bit complicated. And of course it would take some hashing out and some debate. But um yeah. It, it's 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 gonna take it's gonna take uh us getting, you know, the, the corpses out of power, you know. Well, I think first of corpses. all oh sorry. I was going to say, I think, first of all, what they need is to at least have a person you can talk to about something. Because I think that's BS. Like, I DM'd, I even tried DMing Instagram, and I said, I know you guys won't answer, but you're claiming the wrong song. It's not even, and it was actually a line from Friends or something, but it was like they were claiming the wrong thing. And I'm like, it's 15 seconds. You know, what happened to the 15-second rule? And, like, I tried saying stuff to them, and, of course, it's been, like, a week and nothing. So it's like – and I tell them it's really frustrating that you can't – and you can tell it's a bot because they can't – they don't even reply. So it's like it, – I think they need someone to reply to, even if they hire just, just one person, you know. It's like hire one person so that their customers are satisfied, you know. That's my little rant. Sorry. Well, I mean, <laughs> so very badly in this country. Like, aren't they supposed to be job creators? But they're going to this pathway to like automate everything. And yeah. the, the internet companies, the social media companies, also lobbied in court several years ago, saying that they weren't responsible for the user's content. Mm -hmm. So if if you violate someone's copyright on YouTube, they can't sue YouTube. They have to sue you personally. Yeah, they, they yeah, have this so like, cake and eat it too thing. So mm -hmm. Like, are they a publisher or not? Because to censor, right, mm -hmm. then you're a publisher. But if you're a public board, then you can't censor. If you can censor, you're taking on responsibility now because you're choosing what stays and what goes. So you are liable. But if you can't censor, if you're just a message board and anybody can put whatever they want with freedom of speech, then you're not liable. They're trying to have their cake and eat it too. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. And it's especially shady when they're like um, shutting down some content and not other content that is actually super blatantly illegal and corrupt. You know, so like, I don't know, medical misinformation does really good on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So, you yeah. know, but like creators can't um, use three notes that might sound similar to another song. Oh, yeah. And know. it's it gets worse when you get to a million views. Whenever you have any video, if it reaches that monumental moment of a million views, it gets re-scrutinized for copyright with that three note thing. Yeah. So it's like, it's like what, three notes. What? Right, yeah. Thank you for subscribing. Okay, so wearethehits.com. It's this website that is supposed to help you to be able to collect money from singing cover songs. So after the whole Desperado debacle, I joined this website thinking it was going to be a way to help me to eventually get some money. Well, all it was was a way for me to have a horrible problem because um, I uploaded a bunch of videos to it 
and then uploaded them to YouTube, followed their process exactly. Um, and then there was this one video that had this end clip where I was doing exactly what you were saying. Thank you for watching my video and please subscribe. And I literally used that same clip on like a hundred videos at the end. So what, the, what they did was they started giving me copyright claims on videos saying it was the Brian Adams cover of everything I do would do for you when it was some completely totally different video and then I look into it and what they were what they were saying was that cover song was literally the end clip of me talking and mm -hmm. and, and so I try I tried to like talk to them and I was like hey you're doing this wrong and they're like no we're not we're doing it right and I'm like no 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 dude let me explain and I wrote like a fucking page and then like no 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 you, you misunderstand. Our claims processing is working properly. So what that means is is that, you know, whenever you upload something to them, that all of that is theirs. Even your talking. And so then they're, like, vulturing for my talking! Because I didn't want to, like... And so, and so since that moment, since that moment, I have never done that. I always just do my talking live. Fresh. Every time. So that never happens again. <laughs> Absolutely. It's terrible. And like if the audio is similar enough to other creators too, like you're uploading, you know, please like and subscribe, whatever, like is going to hit all those other creators as well. Yeah. The one distributor is going to run their bot. And so if I do like the same, you know, spiel at the end in kind of a similar cadence, then I'm going to get a claim against me over your video having the same like YouTube like and subscribe spiel at the end. It's it's the whole thing is just ridiculous. It's it's it, crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's gotten out of hand. It really has. Especially mm -hmm. with the whole streaming and everything. Like 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 think about it. Like you you make a song, and then you send it to your distributor, who sends it to all these places, and they're supposed to protect you. And they're supposed to collect money for you, right? But like, what was it? Lady Gaga, in her biggest year, got like a nine hundred dollar paycheck from Spotify for the year. Mm hmm. I mean, what? I would expect Lady Gaga on her biggest year to get nine hundred a week from Spotify. Like that would be a pittance. That right? is not enough. But yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I don't know about you. Like, I learned when I was younger that my favorite classic rock bands didn't make any money off album sales. Mm -hmm. Only could become profitable by tours mm -hmm. and selling tickets to concerts and stuff. And, like, I think that's getting more and more real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like, artists used to get money for their albums. Not enough to live on. Mm -hmm. But they used to get something. They could have dinner once a week out. But, but anymore, it's like, good job. Here's 27 cents. Dude, my, my teacher, my saxophone teacher, Randy Lobeck, uh, rest in peace, my brother, he, um, he, he was the saxophone player, the first of a line of saxophone players for Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band. And he was the guy who wrote the saxophone part for Turn the Page, right? Iconic sax line, you know, mm -hmm. you instantly know it's the song. So he, in essence, wrote the song. Not the whole song, but he, he should have an equal songwriting credit for that song because that melody is over seven notes and it's iconic and it's instantly identifiable. You know what song it is. You hear, -da -da -da, you know what it is. That's it. Three notes, right? He got paid 1500 bucks a week to do the studio. He was in the studio for two weeks. So he got 3000 bucks, I think. That's it. No songwriting credit, no royalties, nothing, no copyright, zilch. Mm -hmm. That's it. He got his check, and he was on his way. Yep. Yeah, there's um, there's an issue where if you are guy, forgot what the term is, but if you're under, if you're working a job for someone, um, and you create something creative, like your job is to do something creative, then because you're doing it, work for hire. Mm -hmm. So yep. if you're um, if you're doing it for a company, then they own the copyright for for your work. Yep. And tech companies, especially in the gaming community have stretched that to mean stuff you're doing on your off time. Mm -hmm. right. So um, like, let's say you're a, a game creator, you, you program games for a company, and then you also have like your fun hobby of creating stupid games for your friends. Then those tech companies are claiming because you're a work for hire person, the stuff you created in your off time that is your own creative work, your own original creation is also owned by them. That, that is wrong in every, every so angle is. of the word wrong. It so is. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, because in in the photography community, like we're real careful to not do work for hire. I'm an independent contractor, but I'm not work for hire. Good point. So I retain the copyrights. You get a license. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. No, seriously. But the copyright like really is like uh, at the very least emblematic of other issues we have. Oh, totally. It is. Yeah, it really is. It's and and there's so much to say about it, like, you know, because, uh, like, just just ASCAP and BMI, like, they're like the mafia, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I've known people that had establishments, right? Like, for example, my my friends in Florida had a, a yoga studio, New World Wellness, and they had ASCAP coming in there, and demanding them to pay this ridiculous amount of money every month because. They played music while people stretched to yoga. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what? You know? I see, you yeah. don't even... I, this music is made in India or Tibet or... It's probably... Your ASCAP fingers probably aren't even... You don't you probably don't even have the licenses yeah. for this shit. You know? It's like, I already paid money when I bought this music because... I don't just download music for free. I'm not just streaming it from Spotify or some shit. I bought this music. I own a license to it. Why the fuck can't I play it on my damn speakers while people stretch? Oh, because you're charging money for the class. Well, that's the frustrating part. If you buy music, like if you buy a CD or you d download something from SoundCloud or something, mm -hmm. you actually don't get a license to it. You should. Right? Yeah. Like, I should be able... Like, if I play it in a room with more than five people in it, I'm technically breaking... You know, your basic lose user rights, you know, and it's ridiculous. Yeah, I, I, I know, like, oh, sorry. technically, legally, whenever whenever we perform in public, like, we're we're breaking someone's copyright if we didn't get permission ahead of time. Like, I know uh, marching bands and stuff have to do that too. Like, have to ask nicely to use music, but like, yeah. Quick story though, I, I told this briefly the last time with Marina. I think my march, my marching band. I'm not going to say the name of them or anything, but um, they tried getting written permission from John Williams himself for Star Wars, and we played Star Wars before. We had permission and everything. He decided not to let anyone do it anymore, and my band director was like, "Wait a minute! So you understand that some of these bands are doing it illegally, and you're not going to say anything, but you're, you're going to say no to us, who's trying to get, who's trying to pay for the rights." It's so crazy. It's like so crazy. And then yeah, it's, it's really yeah. frustrating. And there's no, yeah. I mean, like people just do stuff. I, that's kind of like how most dance companies work. Like, get mad at us. All right, guys, we're going to wrap up this stream uh, today. Thank you guys all so much for being here with me. Thank you, Jennifer. Make sure you go over and subscribe to Jennifer's music page. Thank you so much, Nathara, for coming on and telling your story. It's been great. We really appreciate you. Um, why don't you tell everybody your channel so everybody can find you? My channel is maybe a little bit weird for your channel, but I have Crow Song Lodge. But I teach, uh, like, philosophy, spirituality, and witchcraft. Cool. So... Yeah. We do a lot of music reactions here at Matthew's Music Lesson Studio. So make sure you subscribe for that. Make sure you guys go over to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Matthew's Music Lesson Studio. That's where you can support. I'm putting up weekly bonus content. I'm going to be putting up some more bonus content today. So you can go over and check that out. And of course, my website, Matthew's Music Lesson Studio.com for your music lessons. You get to record the lessons and keep them. All right, guys, that's good enough. I'll see you all next time on Mastering Music with Matthew. Mm -hmm.